Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to be introducing the store development tools and I recommend you to install these tools in your project as soon as possible because they make it much simpler to understand the store architecture in general that we are implementing here. So if you remember, if we switch over here to the application module, because we are running our application in development mode, we are indeed activating the dev tools. So how do these dev tools work? These dev tools provide a user interface for inspecting the store and everything related to it. This UI is available here in the Chrome Web Store by searching for the Redux keyword. If we search for Redux, we are going to have here an entry called Redux Dev Tools. If we click into it, we can see here this UI for inspecting the store's content. So we are going to add this plugin to Chrome and we are going to restart the browser if needed. Once you have added this plugin to your application, we are going to be ready to try this out in our sample project. Let's then open here another window with our application and we are going to reload the application in the root route, in the login route. In order to see the dev tools, we are going to inspect here the page using the Chrome dev tools and we're going to search here for an entry called Redux. So these dev tools were initially developed for Redux, but they are compatible with many other libraries, such as for example, NGRX or MobX and with many other state management solutions. So if we refresh the application, we are going to see that indeed we have here the dev tools working as expected. And we are going to be using these dev tools all throughout the course to better understand what is going on. Let's then see what are the multiple components of the dev tools. Here we have the actions log. So as you can see, whenever we start an NGRX store application, this initial action, store init, is going to be emitted by the NGRX store library itself. This action is necessary for initializing the store state and we are going to understand exactly why later in this course. Now let's have a look at the state of the centralized store. So as we can see, currently the store is a completely empty object. There is nothing in it. Now let's go ahead and dispatch our login action and try to guess exactly what will happen here. If we click login, we are going to expect to see here a new entry for the login action, which is the case. So if we click on this action, and we see here the raw payload of the action, we can see that the content is what we would expect. The type is login action and the payload is an object that contains a user property and here we have the user profile. So, so far everything is working as expected. But try to guess if this user has been correctly saved in the store. If we click here on state, we are going to see that the store state is still an empty object. So the store has received the action, but it does not know what to do with the login action. So the store, by definition, whenever it receives an action, will not by itself do anything with the action. If we want the store to do anything with the action, we need to write what is known as a reducer function. This function is going to take the current state of the store, which in this case, it's an empty object. It's going to take as a second argument action payload that we have here, actually the complete action. And then that function that has no side effects is going to output a new application state. So in this case, our reducer function should take the user object here from the payload and it should add it here to the application state. So let's go ahead and quickly write our first reducer function. We're going to talk about how the reducer function works and why it's named like that. 